Thank you so much for taking the time to um, come and speak to us. Please tell me your name and tell me a little bit about your work. Thank you, Esther, for having us. Uh, my name is Diego Marcese. I'm a scientist. I work in breast cancer research, mostly focused on epigenetics, which is how the environment affects our gene expression instead of changing our genes uh, sequences. And lifestyle and everything has a lot to, to do with that. And we study this in the context of disease progression and response to treatments. Interesting. So tell me it, about like what you found at the conference so far. Is there any research that has jumped out that is related to your field specifically? Absolutely. The conference has been very useful for us because we're usually very narrowed into our laboratory setup. And here we see the clinical issues and the clinical problems that are experiencing the physicians. And so we get a lot of ideas for us to contextualize our findings in the context of what could be useful for the clinical settings. Specifically in the term in the in the field of immune therapy, we have been very interested on, on immune therapy response of patients with triple negative breast cancer. And in for another side, how the ductal in situ carcinomas, which is a precancerous disease, could or could not progress to invasive disease. Mm. And how we should mm. study more that to give some answer to the physicians. Yeah, and your research specifically, what has been the, the most maybe novel finding that you've had or anything that you're like, okay, this is gonna kind of change the way that we think about this a little bit? Great question. So we have had some very interesting findings throughout our, my, my career, but most recently we identify a molecule which is related to the invasion of the tumor, the capability to invade the nearby tissues. So. So what we have found is how this is regulated throughout an epigenetic mechanism, how the tumor is smart enough to activate this alteration or inactivate the alteration when it is needed for different stages. So by doing this, we have been able to go back to the early stage of the disease and identify which patients have already this alteration and which patient, patients might be at risk of progressing to invasive disease. So I think there is a lot of field to grow in that direction of the study and make more reliable biomarkers for treatment decision make it. Have there been any trends that you've seen in that as far as patient populations that are more likely to experience any of those um, outcomes? We have a recent study in which we have stratified the patients based on ethnicity and also based on the age uh, groups that we identify and we found completely different epigenetic alterations, not alterations but landscape of these, of these tumors and interestingly enough we found very logical alterations in the tumor from young African-American women, which were related to more hormone-related response or muscle development uh, pathways, which in our context uh, makes a lot of sense because we see poor response to treatment on this patient's population. And probably we have some hints throughout these pathways to understand better and block specifically these tumors that we are not being able to block at this at this moment. Yeah, what are some of the clinical implications that you foresee um, as a result of, of those findings with uh, populations like with African-American populations, for instance? Most importantly, to make a health, uh, ethnicity, re ethnicity specific health recommendation. I'm not saying about the treatment specifically, I'm not saying about how we have to keep our health, uh, specifically related to our ancestries and our environment and our habits how we can, uh, we can, based on our genetic uh, predisposition to acquire or not these epigenetic markers, how we should adjust to that and not do some things and do other things that we are not doing. So I think it will go into a phase of uh, population-based uh, recommendations, more specific population, not personalized yet, but going towards that personalization of the health instead of the disease treatment. So when it comes to um, just personalized health in general, um, how do you see technology playing into that and how has technology impacted the work that you're doing on an epigenetic level? I feel like we're all gathering our DNA, you know, every day with like Ancestry.com. I don't know if you guys have that. So I'm wondering how some of that data and how maybe um, even AI can be used to, you know, speed this process up or make it more accurate. We are seeing a, 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 a renaissance of the science with all this technology in our hands. Mm. I mean, I, I, I'm from the transition from the, I will not say all science, but the pre-genomic science to now we are whole genome analysis, big data analysis, pre-machine learning, pre-artificial intelligence tools for scientists, and now we are seeing all this apply. So we are rapidly growing in the findings that before we were kind of guessing or dreaming of doing that, but now we are able to do it almost daily 
in our lab. So I think it's speeding up a lot our findings. Um, where do you hope to see things go next as far as treatment? Um, what are you excited to see in the future? Um, or what gaps have you seen that still remain? The gaps is a lot of education we need to give more to practitioner physicians. Like instead of treating the disease are subtypes, big subtypes, now we have to treat patients. And eventually we will end up demonstrating that every disease is specific of a patient with all these components playing a role, genetics, epigenetics, and molecular determinants of the specific tumor of that particular patient. So far, they cannot do that because the guidelines don't allow that, but eventually I see us living in that situation. Well, thank you so much for joining us on MD Newsline. It's been an absolute pleasure.